Hello everyone, this is Kira Show here, and yeah, this is going to be part four to what if Deku had Daredevil's powers as a quirk, and I actually have gotten asked a question by Darth Banana Man if I was going to be uploading this today, and the obvious, I just messaged him saying that I am uploading this today, but uh, I've been taking a break from YouTube and I've actually been doing some Duolingo because I'm trying to get back on top of the leaderboard into the promotion zone if you guys have ever tried using it. But yeah, I've just been doing that for a little while and I'm actually almost back up there because I was actually falling behind a lot. So, I've been doing that for most of my time, not recording since the last part. So, okay, let's start a minute then. Uh, I was actually looking into a lot of information for this part, because I didn't know how I could do this without it having Deku shatter or hurt one of his limbs. And... I was able to find a way to do it, but you guys are probably going to like it or hate it. And knowing a lot of My Hero Academia fans, some of them might actually appreciate it. So, here goes. <sighs> Let's see. One thing I did forget to mention is that I didn't realize that my second version of recording part three. Uh, I forgot to mention one thing. The big hand girl did replace Mineta, but whenever the invisible girl got kicked out, Shinsho actually replaced him. Her, actually. I confused him with Mineta for a second because people will do that with their what ifs. But yeah. So, where you skip through on the bus and everyone's talking about their quirks, and Deku's actually talking with, let's say, hmm, she, she's talking with Yagirozu about different combat techniques, and the big hands girl, I need to get her name and find it. I, let's see, uh... I know her and Momo went to the same internship, but I just can't remember her name. But her and the tail guy are talking with Deku and Momo. And they're all going over different types of martial arts and stuff they've studied. And, yeah. Deku would just say that growing up, his mom kind of... She didn't really... She tried being a strong role model for him and how... She essentially helped him learn a bit of boxing and different ways to use his quirk, but one way he always can use his quirk is by tapping his cane on the ground to help move sound around him so that he essentially always has a point of reference for where everything is whenever sound bounces off the ground outward. It's like if I were to drop... Imagine the room's entirely black and white, and any time a sound would reverberate off of it. Actually, no, that's stupid. That would, that's very complicated. It's basically Toph's Seismic Sense from Avatar The Last Airbender, because I know a lot of people have watched that. And if you haven't, what is wrong with you? You seriously need to watch it, and probably prepare to cry for some of the arcs. Anyway, they're going over different combat techniques and different martial arts. And this is one of they learn that Deku and Deku actually is a master in most of the ones he's talked about, including Jujitsu, Judo, Akiri Jujitsu, Kamari, Iskuri, Inke. Wait, I think it's called 
in Inigo wrestling and kung fu. But he also knows taekwondo, taekwondo, and other forms of martial arts more than the order on this list. And he says that he's actually, over the 10 months, he taught Momo a lot of it. But she also had helped advance his knowledge with bringing in different teachers to actually help him master them more. And essentially become his own master. And teaching her quite a bit more. And he's actually helped her improve her quirks control because she used to just... He says that whenever they first started training, she kind of, the first thing she made was a shield against him and or a metal pipe. Kudos on you if you know what I'm talking about, but everyone would, everyone would kind of just think that how did she go from doing that to creating guns, swords, bow staffs. And even explosive bullets. Deku would tell them that he actually helped her study. He gave her a lot of reference material for her to study. And all she ever really does to train her quirk is go over certain material and review it. And there's going to be something that you guys might like about this. Anyway, Aizawa tells them that they need to get off the bus, and all that's going on. Thirteen would explain her quirk, and how it's dangerous, just like how many other different quirks are, but she tries to use hers for good, because she can easily become one of the most powerful villains. Oh dear god, I actually never thought about that. Thirteen can essentially swallow the earth and the sun if she wanted to. Oh, sweet, salty Christ. Okay. Oh, that is... Oh, God, I need to, like, look up a video of that now. Of why she's underrated. Okay, now then. Deku would... I don't know exactly if... Emitter quirks do make a sound whenever they turn on, but let's just say as soon as Shigura or Shigaraki Kiragiri, as soon as he does start ripping into the, essentially he cuts a hole in the in dimensions. As soon as he would start cutting a hole, Deku would like he would tell Momo that. He doesn't have a good feeling, and he thinks that they're they're gonna be ambushed. So he would actually inform Aizawa that something's not right. He hears something, and as soon as he tells Aizawa this, he would he would have grabbed Ida and charged up one for all and tossed him toward the door. And as soon as he did this, Aizawa would have gone in and started attacking. And the door would have closed. Now, Ida barely got out. Like, one of his gauntlets that he had his hand in, on his armor, essentially it got caught in the door, he had to slip it out, and it got crushed. So he got very lucky that Deku threw him. Anyway, now, okay, I have more time. Aizawa, Deku, and Momo would actually start charging in. Deku would power up one for all to 30%, and he would begin fighting a lot of villains, and eventually Shigaraki would have them all be teleported. And whenever they are teleported, Deku, he, him and Momo are actually teleported into the water, but... As soon as this happens, Momo would have... Essentially, she would have latched onto Deku and created a parachute on her back to pull. As soon as that happens, instead of falling into the water, they would have... She would have aimed for the boat, and she'd be very embarrassed because... The way she landed, they were skin on skin, basically, with their hero outfits. Since Deku's a full suit one, it's less weird. 
Anyway. I'm not going to try and go any further with that, because... Yeah, okay. But that would happen. Sue would hop on the boat, and she wouldn't really question it, saying... This is no time for that. We need to get out of here. So Deku would... He would essentially grab Sue and Momo, and he would have them both on his shoulders. Each of them were sitting on his... They're both shitting, sitting, bleh, speech impediments are fun, sitting on his shoulders, like, kind of like how you could give someone a piggyback ride, but he's not doing that, so he would actually hold on to them and jump off the boat at 25%, coming back onto land. After that, Shigaraki would try and attack Momo. Actually, no, she, he would try and attack Sue, but Aizawa would turn off his quirk. Then, after that, he would... The Nomu would have been called in, and he would have beaten Aizawa. And Deku, being enraged by this, would... He would have told Momo that she needs to go... Try creating one of the things they studied yesterday. And Sue doesn't really know what he's talking about, so she wouldn't try and ask Momo, but Momo's trying to concentrate. And Deku would go in and try and hold off the Nomu. He's going at around... Hmm, he's going around 40% to 45%, because that's how much he could use before his muscles start exploding. The explanation I gave for the other part with Jiro, how her muscles don't explode, basically would apply to Deku. If you have not seen that what if, it is basically Deku can use 5% of one for all or 8% of one for all comfortably in the rival fight with Bakugo. But just like how you could lift weights and build muscle and tear your muscles. I want to say one for all can also work like that. How you can reach a certain point where you feel like when you turn off your quirk after a while, you feel like you just got done working out, so your body hurts. But essentially, after Deku can hold off the Nomu for a while, he would fall over and feel like every muscle tendon in his body, he just worked each one of them individually with 200 pounds for probably five hours straight. So every muscle feels like it's burning and on fire. That is basically the explanation. So Deku would have held off the Nomu and Momo, she would have told Sue to start launching these at the Nomu. And if you have ever played Fallout 4, you might know where this is going. Deku would... Well, this is right before his body would give out on him. Let's say him and the Nomu were in a grapple. Deku would just hear the ominous... As soon as he would have heard, like started hearing that, he would have tried to get away from the Nomu and just jump as far away as he can. And as soon as Deku moved out of the way with one for all at 50%, that's as much as he could have mustered, and he pulled a muscle in his leg so he doesn't land gracefully. He kind of. Um, I don't know a good anime character references to. Basically, he gets knocked into the. He gets knocked through a building, because he flew into one of those. That's how far he pushed himself, trying to avoid the explosion. And... Sue would just be... Asking Momo what these are. Because... They are insane. This is insane. Momo would explain that one thing Deku has taught her... Is that since she can create anything, if she knows how it's made, so Deku 
he's kind of he kind of helped her prepare to take on a world ending threat villain and a very powerful one at that and Deku himself said that that thing doesn't seem like it's alive because it's not even blinking it's just standing there with its mouth open it's just it's just there there's nothing in its eyes it's lifeless Deku could hear its heartbeat and it didn't even sound human it was a monster So now Deku is probably a thousand. I don't exactly know how big the USJ is. That won't work. He's probably in the next one of the next areas where a building was. And for the sake of this, let's say Jiro actually ran up and found him. Why Jiro? Because I don't remember. If there were any buildings in the area where her and Kaminari were at. So her and Kaminari would eventually find Deku. They see that essentially one of the most the most powerful guy in in one A is down for the count. And then they just hear the whistling over and over again. And just the constant boom. 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 Just the earth-shaking boom. And they're asking Deku what is going on over there. He would just say Momo is doing her best. He taught her how to make something that is very dangerous, but is necessary for this event. They would ask Deku what it is, and Deku would just tell them it's basically a miniature warhead. They would ask Deku why would he teach Momo how to make one of those. Deku would explain that world ending events, stuff like that, and Kaminari would kind of understand, but Jiro being the realistic one would just ask Deku why. Deku said, in case there's a villain, no one, not even All Might, could beat. After that, All Might would arrive and see the explosions over and over and over again. And Momo is almost, she's nearly out of fat lipids in her body, but she was able to hold, help Deku hold off the Nomu enough. Because at this point, her hero outfit, kind of like in the original canon, is barely... It's still clinging onto her body, but since it's actually a different outfit, and she's using it for more to build weapons, she essentially her outfit what is almost essentially she looks like she's wearing an outfit twice her size almost because she's nearly just all muscle and skin. Anyway, All Might would go beyond a million percent. And actually help, or actually help everyone destroy the Nomu, punch it away, because the Nomu was able to regenerate very fast. And yeah, I know probably a lot of people like what I actually did there. I really like it too, because. No one really thinks about her quirk is powerful. She holds herself back. She actually does restrain herself. I'm pretty sure she can create a lightsaber if she wanted to, because these are essentially just a laser pointer and a crystal. Oh god. I just opened a can of worms with fictional weapons. I regret everything. I'm going to have to look up some good ones, then. I'm not going to be doing a Power Rangers type weapon, or any, like, reality-bending Soul Calibur type crap. Like, from, like... Uh... Crap, actually, I just thought of something. She could... 
Wouldn't Momo be able to actually not inquire stat limits? Never mind. I am sorry if I sound angry or just all around numb. It's nearly two in the morning. I barely got, I couldn't sleep yesterday because I kept trying to think about what to do for today. This one, I'm very much spitballing. And all the information I tried looking up for Momo's quirk. Hmm? Oh, that's awesome. All the information I tried looking up about Momo's quirk was essentially her doing what I'm doing in this what if. And I actually ran into a comic about the mini nuke. And I thought that was very funny. So, yeah. After that, Momo would try and find Deku. The heroes, all of them will arrive after All Might. They would patch 13 up and Deku would essentially... Momo would run over to, to Deku and actually bandage him up and patch him up. Kaminari and Jiro would kind of create... Because I could see them using humor as a coping mechanism. So they would kind of say Momo's almost like Deku's sexy nurse. Something stupid like that. Something I could see Mineta saying with Kaminari. Because I think they were like pervy friends together. Alrighty. But Momo would blush and Deku would kind of laugh before passing out from exhaustion. And Deku would wake up probably, he would wake up probably two hours later with Momo sitting next to him, drinking, hmm, drinking a soda and eating protein bars. I can't, actually no, she'd be drinking a protein shake and eating protein bars. Because the amount of fat lipids she used, it was way too much. She essentially would just lean her own body out to the point where she has no fat lipids left in her body. Like, all muscle and skin. That's weird. Like, that's like... I know that the world's strongest man, or the mo world's most, like, ripped man, he has, like, three-hour stretching sessions a day for his workouts. And those are crazy, because that's just like, that's just him stretching before working out. And that dude literally is, it's weird. You have, you'd have to like look up a picture of him. Anyway, that happens. They get the announcement for two weeks during the, the two weeks they'll be off. And yeah, this is going to be Kira Show signing off. And I will find out some more fictional weapons, or at least cool style weapons I could see her actually knowing how to make. And yeah, that is going to take a lot of research. I hope you guys appreciate my mini nuke sound effect, though. I actually really was proud of that. Uh, oh, crap. I still need to. I still need to rewatch an anime for another what if. I also got recommended another what if by somebody. That one I'm going to have to do a lot more research on because I don't think I actually know what it's for. But when I get to all the proper information about it, I can actually start making it. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, we're still fine. Alright, uh, this is going to be Kira Show signing off. I thought I went over 26.